it was just a white room like there was nothing oh dear. it was just white oh was, everything was just white you could see nothing except me was it padded were the walls padded or you're listening to the big drill and here we are recording on the big drill <sighs> welcome everyone to the big drill and as always i have will here by my side sup gazi hello will can you please tell the listeners today's lovely topic lovely topic so today we are going to be drilling deep on sleep did, did you rhyme on purpose there I mean, it just came it, out, it just it? happened it happens sleep why sleep well basically um i'm pretty tired and you thought i need to figure out a way to get more sleep so maybe if i talk about it i'll fall asleep <laughs> maybe our listeners will be falling asleep well, bloody well <laughs> hope not mate uh no to be honest with you i think like whenever whenever i'm having those conversations with clients like how's your week gone what have you been up to i'm tired no one ever says i've got a bang in 10 hours sleep <laughs> or even eight hours sleep. it's usually i'm tired it's normally i'm pr- pretty tired or just like a, a, it's been a, a long day a glazed look past you and a big yawn you're like you're obviously need a little bit more sleep pal uh yeah so i think it's, it's, it's probably a pretty well it's a really relevant topic to talk about in this coaching climate of like how people are pretty like stressed and have a lot of um Londoners in general really. <laughs> oh yeah Londoners but also a lot of people have a lot of plates spinning don't they you know what I mean and it's just like they end up staying up an extra two and a half hours doing whatever they need to do and then or just on their phone that's been well it will come on to that yeah the addiction of scrolling through social media for an hour and oh, a half God. social media is killing us slowly isn't slowly it slowly it's killing us yeah slowly it won't do it quick though okay so Will tell me Mm. How much sleep are we supposed to get every night? Well, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> that I do. Really. <laughs> um, so, like the optimal is like eight hours sleep. Okay. What's, um, do you know the average for a London? You know the average, don't you? The average is about six to seven. Six to seven, yeah, six times seven. Well, I mean, for me, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here and go. I don't need eight hours sleep. A lot of people do claim. But I think, do you know what happens is you have no, I don't. so li- like you're never hitting the eight hours sleep that you, so you just get by mm. and you think because you're getting by, mm. I don't need eight hours. But mm. I think if you start having the eight hours consistently, yeah, then you had like seven hours, you'd be like, yeah, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely should have had that extra hour. No, I, I agree. You know, I think like I've um, I've I've been in situations where. I've managed to, by some form of miracle, get like three eight hours in a row. In a row. Wow! And I've just been like, woohoo! On top of the Ain't world. Ain't no stopping me now. You know, I'm like, I'm I'm off. I'm like, I'm loving life. Everything's like, I mean, I love my life anyway. But like, it's just like you, you can know, love it more with you that can love it more extra sleep. And it, you, you know, you kind of like you do, you do get a little bit of extra oomph behind your daily living and obviously whatever you're whatever you're doing whatever you're getting up to you know you kind of like have that a little bit more potency on your training a little bit more uh, kind of like acuity at work or in whatever tasks you might be doing cognitive tasks and stuff like that so can i add in i'm sure you've had this as well actually but growing up you know you used to play your PlayStation games or yeah. whatever game you're playing against Johnny, yeah. And you used to get stuck on this level, oh, not against yeah. anyone. You get stuck on this level, and you be tr- you keep retrying. You're yeah. you're loading the yeah. checkpoint on over yeah. Yeah. and yeah. over, yeah. and you just keep lo- you can't do it. Yeah. You can't do it. You go to sleep because you're like, yeah, I give it. Like you give up. You just I can't do this. Uh, yeah. You go to sleep. You wake up. You try again, and one first time, bang, you get it in the first time. Yeah. That's what sleep can do. Now put that into the perspective of life that's what sleep's doing rather to you rather than gaming well no if maybe you're a pro gamer maybe that's what you're supposed to do <laughs> but what I mean is so that sleep allowed you to do something you were stuck on 
and it doesn't have to be the game it can be work it can be training it could be whatever and sure. this sleep has given you the edge yeah i mean it, sure it's it, there's a lot of there's a lot of positives from it there's a lot of reasons why um you would sleep it allows it allows you to perform better in life with a bit more sleep well there across was across the board i was listening to an expert about sleep they do exist oh they do Dr. and he sleep. compared sleep to performance enhance, enhancing drug mm -hmm. it's like a natural performance enhancing drug you get enough sleep you literally enhance yourself yeah once you wake up you're just better at everything else so now that we know it's so important what is stopping us getting the optimal amount of well sleep? actually before we go on to that oh sorry well <laughs> I jumped the gun. Exactly. Don't do that again. I've told you once. I've told you a million times. So, <laughs> basically, um, yeah. So, what what happens firstly when you sleep, right? Okay. I think that's probably a, a logical, a logical step to take, just so the listeners have a little bit of a um, a grasp, if you will. So. During a what's a phase of sleep called REM, you mm -hmm. you end up co you consolidate a lot of your short term memories into longer term memories. Okay. So I think this is why, like, you know, when you were younger and like parents were like, "Yeah, you need your sleep. Get to bed. Get to bed." You know, or you, for your revision, you you stay up revising. I mean, I don't know if you revised for exams, did you? I'm not natural, a good example. Just natural. No, it's just I. You just didn't. Okay, bad example. So <laughs> I, I basically. I, I used to do like last minute revision. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, of course, we all done that. I mean, like, I, I used to, I used to pretty much do that, and consolidate like um. Maybe like, I used to consolidate five pages of A4 double side, into like one side of A4. Or, or two sides of A4, then consolidate it back down to one, and then put it down into like a uh, half a side of A4 with just like note taking. So then I basically could expand. I knew that if I saw a chain of letters, I could basically okay. I could basically just expand that, and I knew it all meant something, key phrases or whatever. But I always found like if once I'd done that, if I then went to sleep, mm -hmm. just slept like an afternoon I'm not I used to revise at like three in the morning there was no rhyme or reason about when I used to go to sleep but I just used to go to sleep and have a nap or go to sleep and have a couple of hours whatever I used to wake up and, rem and I just remember it I used to wake up straight away look at it yeah I know yeah. that one now bang done yeah. and it was almost like I was downloading what I'd just done and, and saving it Yeah. so like when you think about like when you I mean, there's there's papers around this. I'm 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 sitting here with um, I've got a really good resource I use called examine.com. Thanks, examine.com. You're awesome. Um, basically, I I use that quite a lot. It's very well consolidated papers around various um health and fitness stuff and supplements and blah blah. blah. They don't sponsor us. They don't. We just but if they want to, they can. <laughs> <laughs> but like um, so yeah. I, there's a, there's a few papers around. There's plenty of papers around that. So, like, when you think about actually what happens when you sleep, that's pretty damn important. If you're learning new processes at a job mm -hmm. or um, learning new techniques with regards to, so muscle memory as well. So, if you're le if you're using losing your kind of like way around like exercises you're doing, so you go and like get some new techniques in place, and then you start like kind of remembering that and how it feels, and it's all about like kind of that like consolidation mm -hmm. of what's happened during the day lack of sleep so this I mean there's a lot more of a plethora I love that word plethora I've got it in wow thank you I knew you were going to say thank you so, <laughs> so like there's a, a lot more research that's based around things like um, lack of sleep increases inflammation it impairs focus it impairs fat loss um, different things around insulin and, and testosterone and also cardiovascular health so and, and something bits around hydration as well but 
generally when you're thinking about some of those uh, key factors, fat loss, so that's to do with like the ox- oxidation yep. um, of, of of lipids, basically a lower RER. So when you're uh, you know when you're kind of um, burning your fats as a source of energy when low 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 intensity which is obviously when you're sleeping it's incredibly low intensity um also you've got the kind of like inflammation which holds you back from potentially training or or kind of recovering if Mm -hmm. you will that also can connect with like retaining of water on like and subcutaneous so you kind of like look bloated or, or that kind of sense so there's a lot of different things that well, if you don't get enough sleep, if you get a lack of sleep, that can really have um, a detrimental effect on how you're operating day-to-day life, training, or, or towards your goals, whatever they might be. I think focus and cognitive functioning as well is a big a big factor. So if you have I'm I don't want people to I don't want people to quote me on this particular thing you can quote me on other things but not this one like mm. if you have why are you looking at me like that because I'm going to quote you <laughs> brilliant <laughs> so if, if you have I don't know how much sleep deprivation it is but if you go if you dip under a certain amount of sleep mm-hmm. um, for that particular night if you will you end up acting behaving making decisions as if you'd had like th- three pints or something like that, a certain amount of alcohol. So if you were under the influence of alcohol, a certain amount, so you you become cognitively impaired, decision making, um, in in like what you're doing in day to day driving, for example. If you've had no, if you had two hours, yeah, there's a research saying that you shouldn't be allowed. Yeah, if you haven't had, or even for school kids, they shouldn't be starting so early mm. because it's not helping them. Mm. Like it's, it's if anything it's it's holding them back so they should start school later so that they've had enough sleep and are actually able to learn or properly go, or go to bed earlier yeah, it, I mean, it depends what time you have to get up well you know, yeah but, what kid goes to sleep at 10pm they don't do that well they need to then well teenagers aren't going to do that come on Will you've been a teenager once upon a time are were you, you going to sleep at 10pm no and I bloody well wish I was exactly so how about you I give love, them a bit extra I love, time I love going to bed at 10pm now <laughs> it's like a dream now yeah. but back then you hated it so um, yeah there's a lot of things that not not getting enough sleep um, you know in, in general it, it kind of like it, there's health elements but also you know you can get you can feel better mentally as well so from a mental health perspective um you know you can rationalize and process thoughts feelings and emotions a lot better if you've had what's it been how many people like if you think about a toddler that's had that that doesn't that can't necessarily process because they don't have a a prefrontal lobe so they can't process emotions particularly well anyway but if you well they can't but if you've got like a um a young a young toddler to adolescent that's not had enough sleep mm. suddenly something that is actually manageable and not actually the end of the world suddenly becomes the end of the world and then I mean I don't think you had to use a toddler you could have just used an adult I've, I've, I've met many adults that do that as well and that's a fair point actually <laughs> the toys come flying out yeah, the it's just like it's the end of the world for them mate have you had enough sleep I don't think you have have you I'm 44 years old don't tell me I've not had enough sleep so no well fair one but yeah so kind of like your ability to be able to um, mentally process the day and for your own mental health as well you know so get enough sleep Physically, obviously, we've men- we mentioned about information about training, about fat loss, um, yeah. and testosterone is obviously it, it linked to the sexual side of things. Oh, I thought we were going to talk about you know muscle building, like well that too, yeah, muscle building. So you're saying making gains and making love, making life. <laughs> Hopefully, not too many <laughs> with the coronavirus out there. <laughs> Be careful, people. So, yeah, mental, physical, and also sexual benefits of making sure you get enough shut eye. Okay, 
So we know now it's damn well important. We've got to get some sleep. Why is it? Why is it one of the first things we sacrifice, even though it's so damn important? Why is it? You know what? I'm gonna watch this show and then I'm gonna go to sleep. Or Why? I'm going to scroll through Instagram, then I'm gonna go to sleep. Well, that's, that's the why of it. The why of it. I mean, that's that's like a that's a sociological, psychological question. Why, why are we rating sleep so low? It should be well, up there. We're rating something else more important, aren't we? Yeah. So what is it we're rating more important? So what what stops you going to sleep? Because I'm a great sleeper. Yeah, I know you are. How do you know? Because you, you're just always asleep, aren't you? You're always like, I'm going home, I'm going home to bed. <laughs> I'm like, what, really? I can sleep like that. Yeah. People are quite jealous of me. Do you sleep well? Uh, I, yeah, I can do, yeah. Okay. But, so, so you don't get eight hours a day. Why? On night? Um, I don't know. I think, I think it's something to the fact that like, I don't believe I need it so you kind of like have a bit of a look at me yeah I don't know I'm it's, walking around with seven hours because I don't need eight hours so that, that, that's, some, sometimes I only get six it's even worse I think that you you kind of like I guess it's one of those things where you have your wants needs whatever you're motivated to do right so if you're motivated to uh, okay let's let's say for example you've got a group of uh, friends that you really enjoy seeing mm-hmm. and socialising with the fact of the matter is they're an hour away 40 minutes away across the other side of London this is, I'm just going to use this as an example mm-hmm. this isn't me personally I'm just using it as generic yeah. so you, you know on a Wednesday night there's a quiz night most of you are so you go over to them because you value and you're motivated to spend time with your friends do the quiz night you know, have a couple of drinks, whatever, and then make your way back. You don't get to sleep until midnight, but you're up at seven, six thirty. But because you value the aforementioned activity, which also could be, you could put any activity in that. You know, it could be going playing football, could be going to the cinema, could be. I hope you're not playing football till midnight. By the way. Well, no, but you might you might play a five a side tournament. Like, so I used to play five a side tournaments at uni. Yeah, and they used to be arranged so that sometimes you got an early slot and sometimes you got a late slot. Okay, fine. So if you get a late slot, you could be kicking off at nine nine thirty for a half hour game, which could then, or in some cases, you might get a double banker because you've got to make up a fixture from another week. So you end up playing maybe finishing at gone 10 and then you've got to get home get changed get showered and it's just like by the time you get in bed you've lost that extra hour and a half sleep because you still got to get up the next day so I think it comes down to I, well I, I think it comes down to it's more acceptable to knock off a couple of hours sleep if you're doing something that brings value to your life okay We've spoken about value in previous podcasts. What brings value to what, someone's what if, life? What if you're just binging out Netflix at home? Go to bed. Just yeah, that's more important. Okay, I I'm mean, going to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, please don't ever not be. My Tuesdays. Yeah. I, I had to be at the gym at six a.m. Yeah, which meant I had to wake up at five a.m. Yeah. I used to try my best to go to sleep early. Yeah. I'd be in bed at ten. Sure. Just not falling asleep. But that's because you're in t- in previous habits for the rest of the f- six days, right? So then that week there, that day, sorry. Yeah. I end up going to sleep like 12, I'm just tossing and turning in my bed. So do you know what I ended up doing instead? I said, forget no, this. I'm tell just, me. I'm just going to game. All night? Not all night. I've never done that. I used to, when I was in school days, I used to game till the sun came up and then go to school. How bad is that? That's terrible. Any any listeners that maybe in the realms of going to school do not follow Ghazi. In Don't doing do it. that. That used to crush me. Terrible, terrible, I used to be terrible idea. In the classroom, Te- 
when I used to be when I used to be, teach at college, he'd be he'd be the kid that used to infuriate me. He used to come and just lie on lie on on just his desk slowly, put his fade away. put his head to one side, and then dribble on the desk because he I would then dribble. Asleep. I don't know why. What, I don't believe you. I don't. I think you're a dribbler. <laughs> I think you slept on the desk and you dribbled. I'll tell you what I do do in my sleep. sleep. Do you want to know what I do do in my sleep? No, I, twitch. I absolutely, absolutely do not want to know. I what you twitch. Do. Oh, you're a twitcher. I randomly twitch in my sleep, but I don't notice. I've been told by someone else. Oh, right. I'll just twitch and my arm would move sporadically or whatever and I might end up hitting whoever like a preliminary night terror but not quite something along the boogeyman but um, but it doesn't wake me up and I've tried looking into it of why I twitch and usually it's okay when you twitch and wake up I don't wake up I just continue I'd be interested to know if there's any other listeners that are also twitchers I'm a pro twitcher (laughs) Maybe you and Garty could get together and have a <laughs> see if you can hash out why you twitch and I, I would love to. It. If anyone knows I'm why, sh- I'm sure it's to do with your cycle of sleeping. So as you're in deep sleep and then coming out of a deep sleep, like um, your biorhythms as you're coming up and down, we'll have to look into it. But as you're coming up and down, I think it's uh, as you become lighter, you get stimulated by your environment more. Or, maybe dreams or dream, yeah or things in your things on your mind and stuff like that and then you drop back down into a deep sleep again do you ever remember your dreams yeah I do some of them are horrific really yeah you remember that I don't I, I have some really horrible dreams sometimes I don't remember any of my dreams no I wake up and they literally disappear no I remember mine mm. tormented I want, I, I'm not even going to ask don't you ch- we're not discussing my dreams on this podcast <laughs> for sure absolutely not so right what kind of things do you know that can uh, mess up your sleep this is I'm, I'm going to test you a little bit what what messes up your sleep what messes up my sleep or or prevents you from getting to sleep that that day when you and you tossed and turned. But this is the problem. And got up and gamed. Why couldn't you get to sleep? I think it was just it was just too early. My body wasn't used to. Fine. But you, I honestly don't have any trouble going to sleep usually, unless I'm going to sleep when I'm, I'm fully awake. Okay, so what hurts other people then? Obviously, you are impenetrable with your <laughs> ability to sleep. I asked the question. I think wrong. anxiety and stress. Stress and anxiety causes people not to be able to sleep properly. Okay. Um, I think if they were, uh, for example, if they got exam the next day, or there's something really exciting, or like maybe going, not exciting, like they're going to Chessington World of Adventures as a kid. Maybe I hope not as an adult that would keep you up. But I don't know. Let's say something you're really not looking forward to. I'm not work. looking forward to at work. Okay. Presentation yeah, so that's creating a bit of anxiety rather than excitement. Mm-hmm. Or you got an, a really important interview or something. It kind of like I know fighters. If they got a big fight, then they hardly, which isn't ideal for them, is it? Because no. you're about to get punched in the face. You would like as much. Well, you need the best. Fo- you best need the best focus. You exactly. Really. So, so I think that's that, that's a big one for people, especially in uh, Londoners, where <coughs> life can be quite stressful. Okay. Right. So stress, stress, um, and anxiety, things on your mind. So what kind of things do you... What Have you had any clients that have had that before? What have you advised to them what they might be able to do? Meditation. Meditation. Hum. Do you know why they say hum? No, tell me. Okay, I don't know how true this is. But oh I've been my told God, this. here we go. I've got the bullshit. I've been really. told this by a Indian yogi master. <laughs> did he... Did he no, no, she. Oh, sorry. So you assumed that, <laughs> didn't you? But apparently they believe... Hum, hum, was the sound of the universe when it was created. It sounds like that sounds plausible. So, I mean, I don't know how they. You're like that, creating but... the universe within your own universe. Yeah. Okay. So. So try that before you go to sleep. Fine. So yeah, no meditation. That's so clearing of the mind. Yeah. So uh, recently, I had a client who uh, was struggling to get to sleep. Hmm. Why? Because he had a lot on his mind. 
Ooh. which is relevant to the point we, you just we, made. We didn't even discuss that, did we? That was okay. Right. And um, and I, you know, I've I've done this as well before. You know, I've got a lot on the plate. Whatever's happening, got quite quite a lot of things to remember. Um, so just literally parking. It's called parking. In, in the sense athletes use it if shit's going wrong in the game and it's kind of getting to them and they can't concentrate they can't focus they can't relax and get into the flow they can't the momentum is gone they park which means you know that I can't remember I think it might have been a rugby player uh, maybe it might have been Neil Jenkins or something because there was a lot about his um, performance r- routines that he used to have kicking and stuff like that but um I think there's a couple of footballers as well, and they just used to basically park stuff in the centre circle, or like um, just get rid of stuff mentally, but make a physical, make a physical representation, and, and get rid of it and park it. So obviously, if you're in a situation where you can't sleep, parking stuff might be just like writing it down. Mm-hmm. Very simply, writing a list down, and it doesn't have to be um, like a structured at nine a.m. at ten thirty a.m. It doesn't necessarily have to be like. That. Just might need to be. It could be a, a a cluster of words that you've got to do the next day, which is just like pinging around in your head. Or you can do um, something like just clearing your room, and that also adds like representation of yeah. You're clearing your mind. Yeah. So at the same tidying time. your room. Yeah. Just, making sure yeah. everything's in place before yeah. you go to sleep. Yeah. So a lot, a lot of that, um, and obviously from a mental health point of view, if you're struggling to sleep, you know, kind of like having a writing down thoughts feelings or emotions not necessarily stuff you've got to do but just writing down how you're feeling and stuff like that you know it doesn't have to go anywhere you don't have to like show anyone or or, or kind of like read it out to anyone but sometimes it's just about offloading that kind of weight um what can sometimes happen when you're and what counselors look out for when they're having communication with a client is whilst they're talking they catch their breath and they hold it like high in their chest okay. which is like a sign of anxiety and it, and it kind of prevents a nice regular breathing pattern and a nice regular breathing pattern is a facilitator of being able to drift relax and, and kind of fall in, fall asleep so by kind of like reducing to your point the anxiety the stress or things you've got the next day can allow you to kind of relax into that breathing pattern a little bit more and clearing clearing emotions and thoughts and feelings so you know realistically that's that's a great one the meditation can be linked with so i had a couple of athletes that were injured when an athlete gets in well, i used to train and when an athlete gets injured oh my god they the the whole and right you know rightfully so the world them, collapses around the them. world could potentially collapse around them yeah. because especially these guys were actually in a they were vying for professional contracts so you're li- literally your body yeah. Is your way of making money? Yeah, well, yeah, potentially. They yeah. they wanted to get get kind of signed, and um, so I was working with one of those guys, and it was more to do with just a progressive muscle relaxation. Mm-hmm. So using imagery um, of like a very relaxing place where they were fond of, where they felt at peace, where they felt rested, and they felt like so they weren't all at. They were quite a few of them were away from home. Quite a few of them were away from home, so to find that kind of visual imagery of a place of solace where they could just kind of chill, relax and feel initially set up. And then connecting their breathing with the tensing and relaxing of the body parts. So just like start the toes, the calves, the um, the quads, the hamstrings, the glutes, the torso, the arms, the fingers, the hands, the neck, you know, even as much as like the jaw, cleansing the jaw and then relaxing the jaw mm-hmm. as well. So moving all the way up the body and then tensing the whole body whilst breathing in slowly and controlled and then breathing out for like four seconds, whatever, and kind of really exhaling all the air out the lungs and, and kind of letting the um, kind of tension as it's released as you relax and as you breathe out so it kind of matches it together. Progressive muscle relaxation, really good. And um, sometimes I've found myself and, you know, and I've, worked with some of my clients as well just brought that into play and it's really helped them to kind of like get to sleep at night they're going through a particularly stressful time so stress yeah absolutely it reminded me of a story I went to a meditation class once yeah we had to lay down we had to cover our eyes yeah and um, she would be talking to us the person and she would say imagine your happy place 
Yeah. And I'm sure everyone was imagining that. Do you know what I imagined? I, I mean, sitting in your gaming chair, gaming? No, I wish <laughs> it was that. It just wasn't even that. It was just a white room. Like, there was nothing. Oh, dear. It was just white. Oh. Was, everything was just white. You could see nothing except me. Was it padded? Were the walls padded or? No. 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 Not, I tell you what it look, did look like. You won't know what it is. But to anyone who, who understands Dragon Ball Z, right. it's called the Hyperbolic Time Chamber. Okay, it sounds and interesting. It, it was a place you would go in, and time on the outside would go very slow compared to the time. And I was wondering if it. So, did it did it seem like quite, quite comfortable though, or like I like, say, like it was, was my it, happy was place. Soft was it soft, or was it like quite hard and like clinical? It was. You could see nothing. So just white, it was just white. It was nothing but white. Oh, that's that's an interesting one. That is. And um, I actually ended up falling asleep. I've had that. I've I've taken stretch classes before, and you fell asleep. In the I room. know. I've my the people I've been doing it with have fallen asleep. I've had to nudge people, and wake them up, snoring in the middle of the <laughs> snoring. class. Snoring? Do you seriously? Snore? I have a tendency. I've been told I occasionally snore. Yeah, I I'm do not too. that bad though. But, um, yeah, terrible. So my happy place is just whiteness. Whiteness. The hyperbolic time chamber. Hyperbolic. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so do you know what else can impede, really kind of like, so if you were to go through a checklist of stuff to try and get to sleep, there's a list. I, I've had many, it doesn't work, for, it doesn't affect me, but I've had many people say if they eat before they sleep, they can't get to sleep. Okay, so eating too late. Yeah, but okay. to me it's like, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah. So, but yeah, that, I mean, that's a variable one because actually for some people it actually helps them. Yeah. So to have a full stomach, it, it, not a full stomach. It's it a bit of an insulin spike ties not you down. Sh- not straight to sleep, yeah. but kind of like, not str- eating and then go straight to sleep, but more to do with like having a uh, having a meal or having like a nice bit of carbohydrates to like settle them in and then an hour later they're off to bed. Yeah, and some people just go, no, <clears throat> if I eat anything I can't. So what does prevent people then, or what can hurt you sleep, is light. Light. Too much light. So, you know, a lot of research, a lot of kind of promotion of sleep is uh, connected around like having a very black, dark room. Mm-hmm. Um, blackout blinds, for example, especially if you're like someone who works nights or shifts and needs to get some sleep in that past the sunrise um, point where then obviously the room is going to start getting a lot brighter for those that kind of get up with the sunrise like the farmers of the world the guys that make our clocks go back and forth that's why is it yeah so those guys basically a fair play they're right they're not a bad bunch <laughs> um <laughs> if you wake up with the light or you and you know potentially go to sleep with the well, not necessarily straight away with the sun set, but if you're in that situation where the room is light, you know, you go to bed at eight o'clock in the middle of the summer, mm-hmm. nine o'clock, whatever, 10 o'clock, if you've got a particularly early start, um, you're gonna need to, like, to block that light out to get you to sleep easier. And why is it that it stops you? Just because we're supposed to be up in during the day? Yeah, you know, it's, it's that, that kind of light. It's um, time to get up. Yeah, and also light from like the so from an external point of view, but also you, um, on your so this kind of like ties in with the smartphone side of things as well. So I was going to say that that's, that's projecting some light at you. Yeah. So w- w- with your, what do you know what color it is on the phones? What color? What color it is? Yeah, that messes up. It basically there's a color that messes up your um, melatonin levels. Melatonin is like a like it helps you get to sleep. Yeah. Chemical helps you get to sleep in the body. What's the colour? Blue. So blue light. Blue light is the, the blue worst light. light. Yeah. For sleep. Well, yeah, yeah. It messes up your um, ability to promote sleep from the body, from within the body. So, um, and this is something again. I I will put put this in place of a client. There's actually a program on your you can have on your laptop or your your gaming PC um, which is called Flux probably won't work while you're playing Call of Duty or League of Legends I'm telling you I could leave the screen I do I can leave the screens on and I'll still get to sleep it's not a problem for me I'm that good at it so 
it's called flux and you can set the timing so that after a certain time it cuts out the blue light mm. and it allows you to um, you know kind of like gradually mm. um, have that kind of sleep feeling come up come, or well, not have your melatonin um, disrupted melatonin I'm melatonin. trying to think why blue do you think it's to do with the sky I don't know the blue sky is out you can't be sleeping right now so stay awake that would be cool if that is the real reason but I made that up yeah I mean that's fine you can make stuff up it's not a problem just everyone knows that you make shit up anyway that's not we can deal with it but yeah so the blue the blue lights the blue lights and the um, and that wait and bright lights blue lights bright lights all like, of the lights all of the lights yeah get them down and then uh, get, and it allows your uh, melatonin to kind of effectively elicits a sleep enzyme to get you to go to sleep what else come on you're going to have to tell me the next one why don't, How many you, why don't you ever have any problems sleeping it's so I've frustrating I've never looked into it why do you frustrate me so much I noise I do this of so noise, the noise yeah, so the barking dog the lawnmower blah blah any like the cockerel in the morning <laughs> sure why not classic where do you get that from I don't think I've ever heard a cock I have actually heard a cock cockerel in the have you never I have yeah, I plenty have, of yeah. times yeah. sure why are you saying sure <laughs> what a shepherd the shepherd's bush cock no cockerel. in Lebanon oh we used to own chickens so the cockerel used to wake me up every All right, morning okay you can have that one there you go <laughs> Uh, sheep, you know. So what can you do? Earplugs. Earplugs, yeah. Kind of, it's just you know, there's some obvious things, right? So, uh, I mean, the thing is, white noise is actually not not so much of a problem. Um, well, that's because it's constant. You yeah. hear that anyway. So and uh, and white noise can can oft, often kind of actually help. Um, there there are some people kind of looking. Like relax and go through that white noise so there's some moment. noises that will help you but to do with the frequencies yeah so but like large shout large sharp bangs or honks of the horn that will wake you straight up things like but that but that's a defence really... mechanism isn't it it's like you're in the wild then you're sleeping and there's a big noise yeah. you're about to get killed I think that in that sense possibly the... <laughs> you'll, you need you'll, to be, you'll be jumping out of bed yeah, you, you need legging to it immediately so heat if you're too hot Sweating too much. Sweating too much. That's true. Yeah. yeah. If you've got a fever. That would wake me up. I can't sleep if it's too hot. Too hot. Yeah. We found one that... That, that, so, that, right. that would get me. So like, it has to be really hot. So like, if anyone wants to keep you awake, they've got to like sneak into your bedroom and turn your radiator up full blast. Yeah. yeah. Close your window. Everything. And, and if then I start like put, sweating put, out. Put a fan heater on right outside your door. <laughs> then yeah, that would wake me up. Make you sweat... <laughs> Because I'll sweat easily as well, so it's not yeah. Heat will get me. Yeah, so you know, if if your body's too warm, I think I I don't. One of my uh, one of my work colleagues. I don't know why he said this. He makes me like not it, someone I work with uh, with BTN uh, the. Uh, oh, so not a Hammersmith. No, I got no, a guy. A guy. A guy I work with online. A, a guy called Ben Coomer. So like, he um. I think I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was him, and he probably won't listen to this anyway, but. He said, he, "He said, good good temperature is if you stand, um, stand in your bedroom mm-hmm. naked, yeah, and it's a little bit chilly, <laughs> and you need to jump in your bed and snuggle up. That's a good temperature." And I'm like, "Wow, that's a brilliant analogy. I'm just not quite sure who actually uses it as a as a method of testing." I d- yeah, I don't more. think that's the way you measure temperature. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> basically a cool room and I mean I find I also find like air circulation as well so um, you know to like kind of like keep things a little bit cooler where you might crack open a window um, just to let a bit of you know kind of like that I found one that also gets me fresh pollution air in from London go on wasps or insects in general Wasps. They keep you awake. You can't go to sleep with wasps in, in your room. room. In your room, can you go to sleep? There's a wasp in. Your... If you found a spider and you couldn't find it anywhere, could you go to sleep? I've, I haven't got a problem with a spider. I mean, a wasp. I'm. I'm not particularly. Keen. You see, you can't just leave the wasp. So I've got a story about no, this. No, you can't. But mainly because the th- or oh, mosquito, a wasp or a mosquito. No. Yeah. Get out of the bedroom. There you go. You got to kill kill them mm. or just get out of the bedroom. Sorry, vegans. Or get them out the window. <laughs> 
Mosquito- Otherwise, you can't sleep. Actually, mosquito- mosquitoes can die. Because do you remember that conversation that we had with uh, one of our vegan friends? Oh, our he's, vegan he warriors, wanted to eradicate. And he said he would quite happily have a mosquito steak as long as... Cause the mos- a mosquito steak? Yeah, it was a tongue-in-cheek comment. That's, that's going to... He's a lot gonna, of mosquitoes. It's a lot of mosquitoes. But he's basically saying that mosquitoes is happy for them to not be on this planet because he doesn't can't understand... To be honest, reason. that's against veganism and that's quite sexist too because only mosquito, only female mosquitoes bite you. Just going to throw that out there. I'm just a messenger. <laughs> so I had two wasps once upon a time in my room. Right. Two, not one. Right. Impossible to sleep. So I sacrificed my cat's sleep to kill the mosquitoes. Uh, not the mosquitoes, the wasps. Your cats? My cat. I woke my cat up, brought her to my room, pointed at the wasps, and as soon as she locked her eyes... That was it? It was on. It was great team effort. I like was like moving my body to push the wasps into a certain corner, then I had to try and get them low enough so she can actually jump and get them. It was great team effort. And then she killed one. But then she started playing with it, and I was like, excuse me. <laughs> the job's not done. <laughs> There's another one we've got to deal with. And then we've, we eventually got it, and then I had the best sleep of my life. I did the, so did you allow your cat to go back to sleep? I mean, she could do what she wants. And it's, <laughs> it's job done. <laughs> the job done now. Your so, treat is two wasps. Alcohol. Now, this is, this is a strange one, because I've spoken to a few people before which have, said, which have had a glass or two or ten beers and just passed out and gone, oh, yeah. That's what I was going to say. I, was, I thought people quite drunk go to sleep pretty easily well yeah so you know that is it but however um the research shows otherwise you can fall asleep um initially but then if you keep drinking close to bedtime it it impairs the quality of your sleep i was going to say maybe the quality um, is garbage yeah and then you can it can start to be kind of like linked with insomnia and not being able to get to sleep without having a drink which oh we're into, we're, we're into uh we're into dodgy territory that's a deep hole yeah well it can be a deep hole so um it can help you relax and it can definitely help you kind of like uh <laughs> let you know let go and make them fall asleep initially but as a long as a over a period of three four weeks whatever it becomes a detrimental effect so being able to fall asleep and relying on alcohol to fall asleep will impair the quality and also then it will become um, and I'm pretty sure your next morning is going to be shitty as well yeah and that's obviously something that is is to bear in mind you know if you've had 10 pints and you've got to go and drive or got to go and oh not drive teach please. a load of kids or no drink no, driving I mean, I mean, no no I mean like the next morning I don't mean okay. drink I mean I don't mean to have 10 pints in and then home. go home oh no, uh, no that's please hor- <laughs> that's illegal and absolutely <laughs> the wrong thing to do in any way but I mean like drink the next day after you've gone uh, drive the next day after you've been okay. drinking so again and that's also then common. so you, you're, you're you've pretty drunk plus yeah. you've had rubbish sleep yeah that's a dangerous so it's a, combination it's a combat compound effect right you know, yeah you've slept you've slept badly and then you've also um not been drinking yeah you're gonna feel crap the next day uh caffeine as well so i mean this classic is, i know i know people that can drink but i was went skiing with a, with a lad and he was and he'd make a coffee and he was making a coffee a coffee at like half past nine, ten o'clock at night. Are you sure, mate? And he was like, "Yeah." How many coffees does he drink a day usually? Oh, uh, yeah, like, probably quite a few. That's but, probably why. Right. Maybe it's the same thing as the alcohol, where you start needing it to go to sleep. Possibly. I mean, but you know, in any sense, you, you, you're in bad. You're in. You're in bad. Bad news with caffeine. It, it blocks um, various receptors in the brain, which mm-hmm. basically allow you to start. To, you know, start to get to sleep. Yeah. Um, that A1 receptor which promotes sleepiness when activated and um, it's the same one which obviously it's the same receptor that is responsible for alertness so you know you kind of ping you're awake you're alert Um, it can also so like the effects of caffeine 
increase in dopamine levels so feel you know those feel good factors yeah. right so again it's, it's from a stimulating point of view you, you don't want to be doing that and it can it can last and there is research um that shows how long it it can last for and it does vary from person to person of course individuals are individuals but you know if you're drinking i always try myself to not have any caffeine post um three o'clock two o'clock three o'clock is basically the cut that's point. your cut point and i think that's a i think that's a pretty good i know a few people across the industry which kind of like um draw the line there as best they can and i think that's that's something which is important um if you do manage to fall asleep after drinking caffeine you, you do tend to like have like that lower level quality of sleep again it affects it um so similar to alcohol I yeah guess. similar and you know it kind of like leads to you know a lot, a lot of vasodilation and more blood flow and it's, it's one of those things which is great great as a like pre pre-performance or pre-training aid but not for a pre-bedtime aid you know so um Research, I think research shows like about six hours before bedtime, but I'd even like, I'd even go a little bit more than that. Just to be on the safe side. Yeah. You know, so. Well, maybe that's why I don't, I don't drink alcohol. I don't drink coffee. Yeah. No caffeine. Sure. Maybe that's the secret to just being able to shut off whenever you want. So those are the things you don't do Mm -hmm. that can hurt your sleep. Yeah. So what, what kind of things do you do that could help your sleep the obvious one come on Garzi train train I train train hard I train hard physically deprive yourself through training of energy that is nothing else (coughs) and Um, hopefully but I do know people that if they're still in terms of mentally stressed it's still not enough to, to physically drain themselves to go to sleep so yeah you've you've got you've got this position whereby it's like almost a, a self-perpetuating circle right sleep better you feel like you want to exercise more you exercise more you sleep better mm-hmm. so you kind of like get a lot of um there's many studies which kind of like have in place a um a situation that allows you to kind of promote sleep through exercise that mm-hmm. allows you to have a exercise regime whereby you've trained you've expended energy you've got yourself into a position whereby you've allowed your body to calm down after exercise to reduce uh, heart rate levels back down blood pressure back round back down to normal blood pressure um, and then be able to relax into a deep sleep exercise is hugely hugely beneficial without a doubt so do you remember Paula Radcliffe I do I do remember her Um, they used to monitor her heart rate Mm -hmm. every day Mm -hmm. and they had a threshold of I can't remember the number but if it was higher than if her heart rate was higher than that she was not allowed to train so she would train go to sleep she would wake up in the morning and they would check her heart rate and sometimes it would be too high and they say okay you're not doing anything for the rest of the day so it's re- remember training is good but you've got to rest as well mm. you've got to get those rest days in and eventually you start sleeping even better after mm. that so it's not like train like a maniac every single day no and also the timing of when you train and when you want to go to bed so I've I often like I mean I cycle back from work 20 minute cycle um, and I don't it's not a strenuous cycle it's quite a relaxing quite a chilled cycle I've obviously got to be aware that I don't get hit by a random London driver but generally speaking it's a pretty calm cycle back especially if it's like around nine-ish half nine no mm-hmm. no dramas at all and um, what I wouldn't do is I wouldn't necessarily lift weights at like half nine at night I wouldn't want to like go on a 10k run or, or yep. on the treadmill at night up a walk potentially is fine or walk a outside. Christmas walk a Christmas walk Christmas Day walk. Yes. Do you remember the I Christmas remember Day that. walk? Yes. That's so cute. <laughs> okay, not cute. <laughs> so, so um, basically, having that kind of 
lower level intensity exercise closer to when you sleep if it's too intense as i mentioned you just get a lot of like you know you you kind of like you, your blood pressure is up your heart rates up your metabolic systems adrenaline are, the adrenaline is it, firing and it's like it's not going to allow you to to get to sleep so it can actually kind of be a little bit harmful but as as the majority like 90% general of it is the general rule is exercise to help you promote your your kind of quality of sleep so another one that some people struggle with I know I struggle with is a consistent sleeping schedule structured plan go to sleep every day at the same time and you'll be hitting that time just naturally won't you um, do you do that? no no it's very difficult to do it's probably one, because, of the, probably one of the more difficult ones to do yeah yeah I, I mean you, you might start work one day at 6am sure and then another day at 9am mm-hmm. you're not going to sleep at the same time for those two days no so or you might Friday night you might go drinking and you ain't got work the next day I'm going to have a lion so go you're going to go later. sleep later and you're going to wake up later so it's, it's very very difficult to do but possible I guess if you really plan yourself out but this is again it's going back to we don't prioritise sleep it's quite low on the on the ladder of options it is I think also giving time to have a routine before you go to bed is, is quite low down on the uh, priority list as well you know so if you're in a situation whereby you've got this kind of like people rush and to rush to get into bed right boom boom boom, boom, boom right I'm in bed now quick sleep boom mm-hmm. light off whereas you know part of your circadian rhythm is to basically get yourself into a dropping down in you're telling your body habits that or routine that tells your body you're preparing for sleep you're getting ready yep. to sleep you know, brushing your teeth having a you know having a shower whatever um reading a book all these things are kind of like a routine which puts you into a position of sleep preparation this is almost like your body knows it's preparing for that sleep and things like looking at your phone playing games um all right then i have to bring up playing games i'm just attacking me mate it's fine just what the research shows yeah, playing games does not help whatsoever. It doesn't help. Yeah. I can be exhausted, about to fall asleep, and as soon as I start playing something, I'm wide awake again. It's really bad. And a couple of things that I do want to like melatonin, mm-hmm. um, the magnesium are pretty good. I, I mean, for me, as um, supplements. Yeah, but melatonin is melatonin is a tricky one because I just be. I've I've used melatonin before. I know people that have used melatonin before. Sometimes if you get the wrong amount mm-hmm. for you, it you you will definitely be going to sleep without a doubt. But for it, too look too long. No, you'll wake up. It, it's, you're pretty. It's pretty decent at waking up when you like need to wake up. But you can have a little bit of a hangover type thing. A bit groggy, oh, really? A bit groggy mm. so for some people. Yeah. So. Um, you know, it, it's definitely worth um, just making sure that you've got good quality melatonin um, from good, you know, kind of source, but also that you don't necessarily. Um, you just need to be careful that you don't overdo it. It's used as a an aid and not as a, a go to. That makes sense. An aid on occasion rather than a go to every you know every day every night to get to sleep is not not ideal magnesium um a little bit different you know from it's not getting your doses is very good um making sure you're up there but it, it can also you know take taking that helps helps to kind of like have um and, and calm like the central nervous system and, and it helps with maybe some zinc as well so having having a couple of um supplements like that is really and you know research shows it's beneficial for supporting sleep um and a little bit more holistically lavender oh but i actually don't like lavender why because 
I used to live next door to someone who had a lavender bush and bees are quite fond of lavender bushes. Smells nice. It does to a bee, clearly. And because most other things too. Whenever I used to have to go past this bloody bush, mm-hmm. I used to be terrified. I mean, there's a lot of bees, a lot of bees around lavender bush, so I just don't have... Um, Did you sabotage the bush in the end? Oh, I didn't do that, no. Okay. I'm a lover, not a fire. I just walked the other round. <laughs> Terrifying. How awful. You yeah. had to walk round. I walk all the way around. <laughs> no, I was little. Short legs. It was a long way. But, um, yeah, so there's like, there's, there's, there's various anecdotal evidence and mechanistic evidence of like why lavender's good. And for some people it works. For some people it's a uh, placebo, whatever, you know. But at the end of the day, some, something like that under the pillow and... Maybe it's something like calming you, calming yeah, your mind. relaxing, relaxing. You know, they, they, sometimes you might have like a lavender oil bath and, and oh. stuff like that. Which, it, but I mean, I don't know if you do. Do you? No. No, I don't either. But I know people that do. And they, they rave about it. Oh, I'm going to have a bath. I'm going to have a bath tonight. Yeah. I'm going to uh, put drop. I, I do have a bath every now and then. I just, I they have, are, I they have, are relaxing, to be fair. I have magnesium salts and stuff like magnesium and salts and stuff like that which is very nice so that can also help if you want to relax before bed but yeah there you go you've covered quite a lot today oh we we, we about sleep we got in there I didn't think we were able to squeeze that much out of sleep but we have yeah um, is there anything you wanted to add I mean no I'm pretty good I'm pretty good for if I do a little chat about I think, sleep I think the moral here I'm is I'm ready to go to sleep I think yeah I think don't underestimate sleep. It's extremely bloody good for you. Hugely important. And find what's your relevant and optimal way of getting to sleep and getting the most out of... The Even if you're clothes. getting an extra 15 minutes a night. Take it. Take it and run. It's going to add up. Excellent. We shall see you guys next time on, on the Big, big Drill. Drill. And for now, we will be saying goodbye. Goodbye. Where can we find you before before we scurry off? Well, we've got now the big drill on Instagram. Big drill. But Instagram. if you don't like Will and just want to find me, that's Gazi.92. And if you don't like me and just want to find Will, he is Will Hawkins Coaching. Bang. Thanks very much, guys, for listening. Until the next time. Goodbye. See you later. Hi, I'm Will. And I'm Gazi. And thanks for tuning in to The Big Drill. You can also find us on these platforms here. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can find him on Insta. Gazi.92. And me, Will Hawkins Coaching. The links are in the description. And until the next time we drill deep, goodbye. Bye.